All right, today we are in a new section, 521, and we're going to take a look at the inverse of an exponential function. And so we're going to examine what the inverse to an exponential function is. Remember, if it's in blue, write it down, gold, something we should have completely memorized, which means we should put it on a flashcard. So, so far, what we've actually been working on is how to find the inverse of different equations. And if you remember, we were able to find the inverse by switching the x and y. And then we'd get by its, y by itself. So like in this one, you know, I'd subtract 3 on both sides, et cetera, et cetera, and divide by 2. On this other one, switch x and y. Then I can get y by itself, subtract 4 on both sides, and then, you know, I'd have to take the square root, and I'd get plus minus. So all of these other equations we've been able to find the inverse for. The one that we've omitted is actually exponential. And here is the reason why. Let's take a look at this. 2 to the x. That is an exponential function. So f of x equals 2 to the x. So that means that, you know, instead of writing the f of x, I can write the y. We switch our x and y. But how do I get y by itself? Right, that's the weird thing. How do I get y by itself? And so right now, we actually don't have the tools to get y by itself. And so we're going to think about it as y is the power to which we raise 2 to get x. So y is that exponent or that power to which we raise that base 2 to get x. And so if I replace you know, the y with the inverse notation, so my inverse is the power to which we raise 2 to get x. Now this statement sounds kind of confusing, and it's really, really long to explain. So instead of actually just saying, well, y is going to be the power to which we raise 2 to get x, if this was base 3, right, the power to which we raise 3 to get x, Instead of saying things like that, we are going to use this phrase, logarithm. So the power to which we raise 2 to get x is symbolically read as log base 2. Okay, in this case, log base 2 of x. So logarithms and exponents are inverses of each other. So this log base 2 is because this is base 2. And we'll kind of examine that a little bit. If my function is 2 to the x, then the inverse would be log base 2 of x. This 2 is the reason why this is a 2. Now going further with that, if I said my inverse of 8 that's going to be, meaning I'm taking 8 and I'm plugging it in, right? So I'm plugging it in here. Log base 2 of 8 is 3. And the reason is, is because 3 is the power to which we raise 2 to get 8. Because 2 to the third equals 3. If I did this with 3, right? If I had f of x equals 3 to the x, well then my inverse would be log base 3 of x. Because this is a 3, right, that means that was a 3. Because that's a 3, that means this is a 3. And so if I were to say my inverse with 27 plugged in, so I'm taking 27 and I'm plugging it in for x, log base 3 of 27 equals 3 because 3 is the power to which I'd have to raise 3 to get 27. Now it is a little complicated thinking it that way. We don't have to think of it that way. And we're actually going to go into a few tricks to be able to help us solve here. So the inverse, and here's something that's just go ahead and remember. You don't have to necessarily uh, like flashcard that. But the inverse of my exponent is going to be a log. So if I have exponential, the inverse is logarithmic, and it works both ways. If I had logarithmic, my inverse is going to be exponential. So since a logarithm and an exponent are inverses of each other, we can use that logic to be able to evaluate and simplify logarithms. 
The trick is we want to manipulate what's inside the logarithm to match the base. I may have not marked that blue, but we should get that down. The trick is we want to manipulate what is inside the logarithm to match the base. So let's look at a few examples. So we're going to use that definition of logs to simplify or evaluate logarithms. So what I want to do is I'm going to look at what's inside the logarithm. So technically this 10,000 is inside the logarithm. And what I want to do is I want to think about it and say, okay, that 10,000, because I wanted to cancel out with this log, right? We're going to evaluate and cancel it out. I want to see how can I change this 10,000 into base 10. And so 10,000 is actually 10 to the fourth power. Now because a log and that base have that inverse property with each other, they cancel out. And so because they cancel out, the only thing I'm left with is 4. So look at another one. This one's a little tricky as well. So log base 10 of 0 0.01. Well, it's in decimal, so I should convert that into a fraction. And you're going to see why converting that into a fraction is going to be essential. So 0 0.01 is 1 over 100. So this is 1 hundredth, so 1 hundredth. Well, it's base 10 still, so how can I rewrite that in terms of base 10? So it's 1 over 10 squared. Well, if I move that back to the numerator, I get 10 to the negative 2. And so log base 10 of 10 to the negative 2, that log 10 and the 10 will cancel out, and I'm left with negative 2. Let's look at another one, log 3 of 27. So I need to think to myself, 27 is 3 to what power? And so it's actually going to be 3 to the third power. The log base 3 and the 3 are going to cancel out. And so I'm left with 3. This one's a little different. And the reason why it's a little different, and this is where some of the logs start getting a little bit more difficult. And so we're actually, I'm going to teach you guys another trick tomorrow that are going to help us solve these logarithms. But in this instance, I have to think 3 is 9 to what power? And I want you guys to like pause it and kind of think about it a little bit. 3 to what power gives me 9? And you're not going in the direction of 3 squared, 3 to the third, 3 to the fourth, etc. So it's actually a square root. So 3 is the square root of 9, but a square root is the same as a fractional exponent. So that square root of 9 is actually 9 to the 1 half power. So that log base 9 and that 9 are going to cancel out, and you're going to be left with 1 half. Log base 6 of 1. This one typically trips up students, and the main reason is because 1 is 6 to what power? And we always forget that anything to the 0 power is 1, and so that's actually... 6 to the 0 power, and so then the log base 6's cancel out, and you get 0. And the last one is if you ever get it to where these cancel out, because that's really 4 to the first power, you're just going to get 1. And we can make a definition about that. We can say log base a of 1 will always be 0, and log base a of a will always be 1 for any logarithm, base a. So if you ever take the log of 1, it's always 0, and log base a of a, when these are two the same, it's always going to be just 1 if there's no exponent. Now I want you guys to practice this. Go ahead and give it a shot, and then I'll go over it. So go ahead and pause the video, and give these two a shot, and then we'll talk about it. Alright, so let's go over it. So I have to think to myself, okay, 64 is 4 to what exponent? So 4 times 4 is 16 times 4, 64. Okay, so log base 4 of 4 to the third. And so now the log base 4 and the 4 cancel out, and so I'm left with 3. 
log base 3 of 81. So I need to think, okay, 81 is 3 to what exponent? So 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So that's going to be log base 3 of 3 to the 4th. Those will cancel out, and so I'm going to be left with 4. So what did we learn today? Well, we talked about the inverse of an exponential function. And that happens to be a log. So to answer what is a log, it is the inverse to an exponential function. And the way that we evaluate logs is whatever's on the inside of that logarithm, we want to manipulate it to where that base is the same as the base of the log so that they will reduce. Now, sometimes you won't be able to. So like, what if I had log base 5 of 7? There is no way I can manipulate this to where that base 7 will turn into a 5. I can't think 5 to what power is going to give me 7. It won't work out. You won't get any problems like that just yet, but we're going to learn how to compute and solve those later on. Not solve, but evaluate those later on. We have to use a special formula to be able to do that. This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.